today uh, I'm gonna be going over just a quick few tips for making assets for the community in this good game design video so a few of you um, have probably put out something on the Dreamiverse already probably a sculpt or a model etc well that's perfectly fine and dandy um, some of you may have put out like a car or a enemy or something like that some of you might have put out logic chips etc well I just wanted to make a video uh, explaining some of my grievances I've had in the past with some assets that I've found on the Dreamiverse um, just some things that you can do that don't take much time at all in order to make an asset game ready and really easy to use um, for someone else to use specifically and just to drop into their scene. So first off I want to go over characters. Some people sculpt their characters using the um, move controllers and they won't necessarily be doing it with a floor or having a floor and they'll end up oftentimes especially with snags in particular they'll have their puppet like this and they'll be sculpting it and they think it's fine because with the move controllers you don't have a up and down limit for the camera like this like I'm pushing up on my stick but the camera is not going down. That's because it knows where the floor is. But with move controllers, everything is um, just where it's like you're in space, basically, and there's no up and down. So I'll often end up with uh, sculpts, not sculpts, but puppets that are like this in off center. And if you go ahead and drop that in into a game, your puppet's gonna walk weird um, because of that, or they'll end up doing something weird like that. Or even, heck, sometimes they'll end up sculpting and like the entire puppet is off center like this, and then they'll walk like really weird. I've seen quite a few people end up doing that, especially in beta. It's not as bad as beta now, but it's still something excuse me, it's still something I want to go over. And something that uh, is often the case for puppets particularly, um, not usually many other assets, but it does happen for other assets, is that puppets will end up like over here or like in the void somewhere. Um, just when you're trying to bring it in. Like, so you'll drop it in and like you're completely over here and you're like, where the heck is this puppet? And you'll try to rotate it around and you can't see it. And then you find, oh, it's over there. And you're still trying to drop it in place and you can't because it's like completely out in the middle of nowhere. So if you uh, go to your guides menu and turn on the floor, the best way to publish your asset, it, uh, particularly for puppets, is to place them right in the middle of the floor, which you know the middle is where this circle is right here, this big circle. And um, you want to place your puppet pretty much smack dab in the middle like this with the feet on the floor. And this is going to make it a lot easier for people to bring in your puppet particularly into your scene. Alright, next um, would be for other than this, I think this, I think that's all grievances I've particularly had with puppets specifically. But uh, another thing would be, um, like for example, a lot of people make cars. Um, lots of people make vehicles or stuff like that. And they will go ahead and make a giant floor for them to test their car on. And they'll be driving around in the car, room, room, and they're like, okay, cool, this is good, I'm gonna publish it as a vehicle. And then you end up with an asset, and you bring it in, and you're like, okay, th this is a cool car, I think I'll place this in my scene, and then this is what you see when you drop in the object. You're like, what is going on? 
what is happening and then you just try to rotate it around and you're like oh god somebody put in an entire block like this in their scene uh this happened I, I know of two cases of this particularly um there is i think the red car does this yeah the red car free and oh look there's the off center camera thing and then it's out in the middle of nowhere and it has a giant block of grass and then you gotta scope in and delete it and now you got the car and then it's still off center there we go and you're like completely in the wrong place for your scene and then i think also cloud there was a cloud puppet there was a character cloud not here he is let's see if he's updated nope even this one's even worse see your camera's inside of the object and you have no idea what's happening and then you got to zoom out all the way and then you still don't know what's happening where is cloud i have no idea where cloud is uh you place the thing i still don't know where cloud is like this is ridiculous like come on like what what is happening and then on top of that um you get the atmosphere changed like the entire sky is different than what you expect it to be so you gotta delete everything but the puppet and for some people that's not that easy like especially if you're just trying to pull in something from the dreamverse really quick a lot of people aren't going to put in the effort to do that. So now, I believe, our puppets... Oh look, the puppet doesn't even move around properly. Why is that? Oh, there it is. I think that's just... No? I'm not sure what's happening. I think it's because this is not the floor. Where is the floor? I don't know. Copy it, maybe? No. It has gravity. I don't even know why. Oh, he's not collidable? Why is he not collidable? See, like, there's some things that just are just... I don't know. Just, I have no idea. And look at that. Some people... I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> so this guy, whoever made the cloud thing, they definitely need to update him, like, really bad. Um... What else? What else? What else? Okay, so for logic, um, a really good way to have your logic, of course, is to have it here in the center like this. And a lot of people will publish stuff and not label things, so you really need to label stuff like the microchip itself. You need to label your nodes. You want to have nodes. That's a very important thing. Is you want to have options. If there's something in your microchip that you know can be changed, you want to give like something really easy in order and accessible in order to change it. So if you have like your entire logic on the main board, what you want to do is you have like a sub microchip that actually has all the logic in it, and then when you open the microchip. You have options in here like value sliders, uh, switches and stuff that can change like for example maybe you have an enemy like AI like a car, an enemy AI for that and you want to change like the sight distance that they can see the player you would have a value slider toggle um, like for example if they can use certain weapons or maybe how fast they go and stuff like that you want to be able to change that easily on the main page of the microchip and not somewhere deep within your logic like within microchips within microchips so it's really easy for people to modify and use and of course you want to label everything so not just value slider value slider switch etc you want to make sure everything is properly labeled so people know what things are uh, i've had some people ask me on how to use some of my microchips, so I'm guilty of this as well. Um, 
I can find one of them. You know, it would be easier if I just filter by contraption. There should be both delayed camera relative sticks, maybe. Do I got any comments on this? No. But this is a good example, like in here. We can see I open this up. I got local stick, camera relative stick. It's all labeled global settings. This is something that can affect other stuff like this. Allow imps, max players, number of players. Like this right here, and this right here. If you want to change these, it could possibly conflict with another one. So that's why I have this out in the open. So you're able to open this and see easily that there's global settings in here. And then there's the actual logic itself. And I didn't really label the stuff in here because I didn't expect anybody to look in here, but it's, it's pretty math complicated stuff. And where else? I know I have a let's see I know I have a logic piece that isn't fully explained that some people have asked about I'm having a hard time finding it random position on a circular plane Um, some, I think, no, I think it was like in the Discord somebody asked me about this, but they asked how to use this, and I guess I didn't document it well enough, and that brings me to my next talking point, where you can actually make notes in your logic. Um, some people would use text displayers, because, I mean, you can read it on this, but you can also use subtitle text displayers. And you can turn these off and then just type in whatever. And then when you hover over them or select them, they end up on the screen. And they don't even have to be turned on. So you can actually use subtitle text displayers as notes in Logic. I know it's not as good as Little Big Planet Notes, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> um, and it's definitely better than this. Like. I don't understand why these have to be so big. It's ridiculous. Like, you have to have max size microchips if you want anything decent <laughs> with those. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys um, learned how to publish things on the Dreamiverse a little bit better. I'm not even sure how I'm going to make a thumbnail icon for this video, but hey, um, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, like maybe a tutorial idea or something that you need help with, etc. And I'll try to get to you. Um, hope you all have a nice day. Also got a Patreon if you want to do that. Got a Discord for my Patreon members as well as I invite people big in the community like MadGFX and Ibubeck, a few others. So, um, hope you all have a nice day. Bye. Goodbye.